God sent Elijah to fetch Elisha. Now, take out your cell phone because I want you to see this for yourself or your Bible. And go search 1 Kings 19 verse 19. And you tell me where Elijah found Elisha. And then I need a volunteer to explain to the church where Elijah found Elisha. And you know the drill. If nobody comes up, I choose somebody I know. Okay. Where did Elijah find Elisha? One Kings 19 verse 19. Where did he find him? Lying in the oxen. Okay, here's the detail. There were 12 groups of workers plowing the field with their oxen. He was in the 12th group, right at the back. Not a place of promotion. I tried to work that out in the corporate sense. The MD appoints a boy that is in the last group plowing the field in the desert. We can't work it out because we're building God's kingdom and this is about the body of Christ. We don't do it the way the world does it, okay? God can fetch you from obscurity and take you to security, but God wants to see whether you can stay in that place because God can find people that people cannot find. How amazing is that? God GPS. God can find people that people cannot find. God just wants you to, in this year, stay serving, stay being faithful, stay giving more of yourself, stay in his presence, stay pitching for intercession, stay, just stay at that place. Imagine Elijah went to fetch Elisha, and the previous night, Elisha thought, God, you spoke to me. It's been confirmed prophetically over and over and over. I know this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm giving up. I'm going to heal songs because I can sing. And in my church, God, they don't want to acknowledge my amazing gift. So up goes Elisha and he goes. God never in scripture said to Elijah, if you can't find Elisha, go search for him. He said, that is where he's going to be anointing. Imagine the previous night, Elisha packed up and ran after his own dreams. He would have missed what God has prepared for him all along. Okay? We often abdicate our place. So then God comes to anoint us, and we're not in that place. And then somebody else is in that place. And that person gets the godly promotion. Okay? If you're not in place, God cannot catapult you into proper godly placement. Here's the other thing. When Elijah anointed Elisha, he wasn't placed in a prominent position. He served Elijah for another 10 years. It's insane. It's insane. All this trouble, God is speaking to Elijah, go fetch him in the desert. He gives him all the detail. And you think, Elijah is going to be promoted. No, serve Elijah for another 10 years. Stay in that place. Do you think that there was never a time that Elisha was offended with Elijah? Let me tell you. If you are longer than four years in the church, you know that Elisha was at times offended with Elijah. He didn't leave the church. He didn't pack up his stuff and said, listen, I know exactly what God called me to do. I'm out of here. You've anointed me. I've got the calling. Ciao, China. Amazing. Don't give up your place because people don't greet you. You greet them. Don't give up your place because people don't invite you over. You invite them over. Don't give up your place because you're offended and your heart is full of uh, unforgiveness. 
don't give your place away, okay? Um, we've got a friend whose wife died, I think, three years ago. He's in Joburg. And um, this is the amazing thing about outreaches in our church. He came on outreach with us. What we didn't know is he was completely backslidden. So at, on our uh, outreach, he recommitted his life to the Lord. So he went back to Joburg and um, went to see his pastor and said to his pastor, I want to join your church. He said, and you're telling me that because? He said, because I want to tell you, I understand something of the principles of the kingdom of God. I'm willing to do in your church that nobody else is willing to do. That's what he said. And the pastor said to him, I can't find anybody that can give the Alpha course in our church. It's like our encounter one. He says, count me in. That church exploded last year because one man said, I'm willing to serve this church. I'm willing to stand in that place even if it's hard for me. He is a businessman of a huge corporation. It's not as if the guy has got the time. It's not as if he really has the capacity. But people came to salvation one after the other because he understood the place of serving others. Don't get connected from the church that will take you to the God thing. It's like a marriage. Don't get out when it gets hard. Just because your husband is working seven days a week and you don't see him anymore doesn't mean it's time to find another one. The momentum is on the house of God. So I want to ask you in this year, get part of the house. Start serving the house so that God can take you from a place of obscurity to a place of security. If you go to 1 Kings 19, no way did Elijah tell Elisha, Elisha tell Elijah what to do. Right at the end, Elijah turns to Elisha and says, ask what you want. Never interfered, followed him diligently, served him diligently. What do you think is happening when nothing is happening in that wilderness place of your life? Do you know what is happening? We can't see anymore. If you only see what you see now, you will not be able to see that which is coming. If you only see what you see now, you will never be able to see that which is coming. Stay in that place. Serve wholeheartedly. You know what? Often we say, we look at, let's say, Vernon and Krista. Let's say they become, we appoint them as pastors tomorrow. Just an example. A whole lot of people in this church will say, they've been promoted overnight. Heck, they haven't even been district leaders. What's going on here? And we often do that. But you know what? Their night was most probably 20, 30, 40 years long serving, building, being faithful, okay? Stay in that place. Last Saturday, yesterday, a week ago, we attended the Aspling wedding, St. Clair and Maraca's wedding. And Maraca had a little speech at the wedding and was so beautiful. You know what she said to St. Clair? She said to him, I'm so happy you showed up. How amazing. I sat there and I said to Maraca, I mean, hello, would he want to miss out on this? I'm so happy you showed up. To stay in that place means you have to show up. You have to show up at small group. You have to show up at intercession. You have to show up at encounter one and two and foundation three. You have to show up because that's the place you grow and experience great breakthrough and taste of the wedding feast with the body of Christ. You have to show up. God was preparing Elisha in the wilderness. If you're in the wilderness, stay in that place and keep showing up. It's not about who we are, but who he is and what he wants to do through us. It's not about you attending Encounter One if you've done it 10 times. It is what you, He can do through you while you're there. Your testimony, your story, your prayer. 
It is about showing up in God's kingdom in the body of Christ. God is preparing you for that which he has already prepared you for. God is preparing you for that which he already prepared for you. We see it in Jeremiah 1 verse 9. God comes to Jeremiah and says, Jeremiah, before you were born, I called you as a prophet to the nations. That's his place. Was he promoted into it first? He went through a hell. But he knew God called me for this. I need to serve. Don't take yourself from the call. Hardship can cause us to rise or it can, can cause us to be victims. I said to Mac last week, I said to him, um, he teased me about something on the telephone. He said, I'm not going to speak um, out of our household, so sorry you can't have the info. But, but he phoned me, he said, lovey, I know how you're going to be disciplined in one area. And I'm like, huh, never worked before. He said to me, if you don't get disciplined in that area, you're going to drive from now on with a small green car, which I can't drive because it doesn't have steering, um, uh, um, power steering. So I go into pavements, I go over pavements. <laughs> I'm just pathetic. And I'm like, <laughs> I said to him, you know what? What you're doing now is what the word of God does. Some of the scriptures are fun to read, but horrible to live. But you check me in 2015, I'll be so disciplined in that area, you'll never see me in that car. Okay? And that is what James 1 says. It says, consider it a gift if, if you face all kinds of tribulation. Like, seriously? Okay. Let's make this practical. Imagine I phone Alida tomorrow morning and I say to her, Alida, my world is falling apart. I just can't have any. And she goes, oh, wow, what an incredible gift. I would reconsider the friendship. I would. But that's what the word of God says. So we come to God like Elijah. And, we go, <laughs> and God says, what a gift. Now I can plant you and you can grow and you can blossom. Because God looks at things differently. God sees an ambush as, um, without any escape as an opportunity. Okay? To make it practical, it works like this. In South Africa, if you want to buy a plant tulip bulbs that blossoms in winter, you have to keep them in the freezer through summer because we have to tell those tulips it is snowing in South Africa. And then in winter, we replant them so that they can think it's spring. And by doing that, we force them to bloom. It's exactly what the Word of God does with us. God often disarms us before He arms us. If you feel rejected in that lonely place, that place where nobody's caring for me, that, that wilderness place, right down this morning, God is creating an atmosphere for me to blossom. Okay? Because we as Christians, when the world falls apart, we as Christians are supposed to flourish. Ouch. Okay? Don't run away from your place. Because, I'm not saying because I'm speaking on behalf of the church, don't run away from that place. I know, I can testify. The retest is always harder than the original test. You don't want to rewrite it. Okay? Forgive people's trespasses. Don't give up your place because of unforgiveness, rejection, offense. Don't displace yourself. You see, Jesus also holds a place. He's at the place of the right hand of the Father. Am I right? Is this scriptural that I'm saying? Where was he before he was there? He was at a place that we know as Gethsemane place of obscurity. And he also cried out. He said, Lord, if there's any other way out of this, please let that cup pass me by right now. And then he said these words that I think if we use them most 
in our lives this year, we will see more breakthroughs. He says, Lord, but not my will, but yours be done. If we just go before the Lord and we say, Lord, not my will, but yours be done. Lord, this place that I'm at is so hard, is so dry. There's no ravens that feed me bread and meat in the morning. But Lord, your will, not mine, be done. If you embrace your place, do you know what? You cannot be displaced. And you don't even have to compete with anybody else. Because, can I have Cindy and the Titus row and Jason, that row, can I quickly have you in front here, the whole row? Because you don't have to compete with anybody else. Because we each one have a gift. We have a place. Now imagine this. In a corporation, it works quite differently, and I'm not going to explain to you because you know how the corporate world works. But in the body of Christ, um, I appoint you as leader. Okay, I want you to just gather around Cindy here at the back. Just gather around her. Okay. Now, now, they are the body of Christ, okay? And they all have different gifts, and they all have different callings, and they all have different things. But she has to lead them, so she's leading them. And that's exactly what happens in the church. The body is not following Elijah was appointed to follow Elijah for 10 years. Can the body follow, please? And that is what we're going to do in 2015. We're going to get in place, not because we want the prominent place, but because we find to be in the place where God can come and fetch us where people cannot fetch us. Amen? So this morning, I just want to say to you, embrace your place. Embrace your place in this year. Be in that proper placement, even if you are like Elijah at burnout. And you say, I can't. And God, you helped it, but only up to a certain point because now the brook has dried up. You know what happened after the brook has dried up? God said, okay, now I want you to go pray for the water. Okay, God, I suffer burnout. Did you forget that? I'm on to my first, uh, next assignment. He, he gets to the water. He says, God told me to come to you, you will feed me. She says, you're mad. Where are you coming from? You're so freaking arrogant. I don't even have food for myself. I'm going to bake a bread and then we're going to die, my son and I. Okay, where's God in that? It's about you being faithful in that place. Stay in that place.